So last night was the coldest it's literally ever been since we moved into this house. It was negative 26 degrees. And that's not even factoring in the wind chill. So it was very, very, very cold. And I wanted to be able to test these Mr. Cool mini splits. Now this isn't sponsored in any way, shape or form. I paid for this system out of my own pocket. I've earned zero dollars in exchange for making this video, okay? So just to be clear up front, I use my mini split all the time. It pretty much doesn't stop running because during the winter we have it on heat and then during the summer we have it on cold. And I have just been blown away at how efficient these are. Now last night, this did not work. It doesn't work below about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Anything above that, it seems to be doing quite well. And this unit right here is set to 73 and is currently pushing out 96 degrees. And then this is another unit that's tied into the same outdoor unit. So there's one unit outside and then two heads inside. Both of them set to 73 degrees on the highest fan setting. It is definitely very warm right here. And this one you can see is actually putting out more than 98 degrees, about to break 99 degrees right there. So definitely plenty of hot air coming out. But what's the temperature outside? And right now it's 1.4 degrees outside. So it is bitterly cold out here. So we literally have a hundred degree difference between the output of the mini split inside and what the outside temperature is. Okay, let's go inside. Now you'd probably be surprised to find out that those two mini splits putting out that much heat, which is easily capable of heating over about a thousand square feet, is using equal or less power than this single heater right here. Now, if this is your first time to the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel, my name is Ben and I like emergency preparedness. And one of the major things I like to focus on is solar backup or even off-grid solar power. So if you have questions on what kits I prefer and actually use to back up my house and my off-grid cabin and my RV for 100% boondocking, go to poweredportablesolar.com. You can also shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com or you can get direct access to me and I can help you with whatever preps you've got by becoming a contributor on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep. So for this video, I've completely opened up my electrical panel and we're gonna see exactly how much power these different heaters are using and how well they are working to heat our house to make sure we stay well above freezing. Not everybody wants to pile up a bunch of wood for a wood burning stove, but it's absolutely a great option. I'm not saying that there's something better. I'm just showing you guys how this has worked for me as far as offsetting my electricity bill because I'm using far less energy on average to heat with the mini splits than any other kind of heater. Now, the reason I've got this opened up is because we wanna do some simple math. Now, the way that you calculate watts is by taking volts, multiplying it by amps, and you get watts. If you have the same amount of watts over one hour, then that tells you your total watt hours consumed. So for example, on your electricity bill, if it says you're using a thousand kilowatt hours a month, then that puts you at about an average of 33.3 kilowatt hours per day or about 1.4 kilowatt hours per hour. And so that's how you can factor your electricity bills. If you're using 1.4 kilowatt hours an hour, you do that for 24 hours a day for 30 days in a month, you're gonna use about a thousand kilowatt hours and that's what you're gonna get billed for. So right here, I've got the mini split that has two zones on it on one outdoor unit. And then here I've got the garage and the only load that I'm running in the garage is that heater. Everything else in the garage has been running off of a solar generator system for the last five months or so. Now I have this handy dandy clamp meter. This one's from Fluke. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the voltage of each breaker and then test the amperage on how much power is getting output through the circuit. And by doing simple multiplication, we can find out the exact watts that are being used. So first right here on the mini split, what I'm going to do is take these two probes and put them right here. And so we're getting 246.5 volts right now. We're gonna call it 247 volts. Now on this breaker right here for the garage, I'm gonna put my red here and we can see we're getting 123 volts. Now, the other cool thing about this fluke meter is I can go all the way up to the setting right here. And as long as I put this around one of these wires here, I'm gonna get the exact amps that are going through that wire to run everything on that circuit. And since the only thing on this circuit is that dual zone mini split, we can see we're doing 5.1 amps. So in order to figure this out, all we have to do is do 247 times 5.1, and we are using exactly 1,259.7 watts to run this. So we're gonna call it 1260 for easy math. But what about the heater in the garage? I'll put that right there. And we can see we're using exactly 10 amps. 
So we're gonna take 123.5 times 10 amps and we're using 1,235 watts. So that electric heater out there is using 25 watts less energy in order to run the heating elements. So by using the mini splits, which are also called heat pumps, because this is exactly what they're doing in the winter is providing heat, they are able to do more than twice as much heating for the same amount of energy usage. Now don't get me wrong, using electricity to make heat is a very, very energy intensive thing to do. But let's say I wanted to save on some energy. One of the things I could do would be to reduce the fan speed. I could reduce the output so it's not gonna be working as hard. The other thing I could do is put it in eco mode. The biggest thing I could do would be to put it in 100% auto mode. Now what auto mode is going to do is I'm going to set the temperature that I want the room to be at. And once the room reaches that temperature, this is either going to slow down how much energy it's putting out or it's just gonna stop putting it out until it needs to start heating again. The same applies for air conditioning. So I can just set this and it will always keep that room at that level. But because it's been so stinking cold, I've been blasting these on high speed and high heat. So I just turned the speed down on this. We are now at about 94 degrees coming out of there. This is plenty hot air coming into the house, even though it is ridiculously cold outside. We run that for an hour. That's gonna be 1,260 watt hours per hour. Let's say I got 12 hours that I wanna have battery backup for that I have to run this off batteries. All I'm gonna do is do 12 times 1260 and I'm gonna get 15,000 watt hours. Now with the Delta Pro system, that's about 75% of its battery capacity. Same with the Blue Eddy AC500 and the AC300. Now really the only systems that are currently available are the Delta Pro, the AC500 and the AC300 that are capable of doing 240 volt power. There are a couple of other units that have come out but they have had issues and so I'm not even going to mention them because they don't belong in anyone's houses because they're not ready. But once those do come out, I'll have full reviews on those. Now on the flip side, if you wanna be able to continue running that electrical heat of about 1200 watts per hour, then all I gotta do is have enough battery and then enough solar panels in order to recharge the batteries while still running that equipment. And when it comes down to that, the only system currently capable of doing that is the Blue Eddy AC500. Now, if you wanna get good deals on the Blue Eddy AC500, shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. If you're gonna go a completely different route with heating or backup power, then that's up to you, that's fine. But at poweredportablesolar.com, that's what we do is help people figure out the exact kit that'll work best for them for the situation that they're preparing for. So is it possible to heat your house with electric heat off of a backup solar generator system? The answer is yes. Is it easy? No, not really. <laughs> it does have quite a bit involved with it with a lot of solar panels and a lot of battery capacity, but it's definitely possible to do it. The other option would be to use something like the Hotspot ACDC 18C, which is an 18,000 BTU mini split heat pump that I have installed at my off-grid cabin. Now, the unique thing about that one is it has the ability to run off of solar panels directly during the day rather than another 240 volt power source. But in addition, the hotspot energy can also run off of any other 240 volt power source, whether it's a really cloudy day or it's night and you're using your batteries. So that option does give you the ability to be getting lots of heat or cooling, same for about a thousand square feet, but during the day it's powering itself with the solar panels. So that is a huge cool thing to do, but the disadvantage is it's only one zone. So it's gotta be getting into a wide area to really be effective. Now, why is it important to have solar backup? It's because people are having power outages far more commonly, electricity rates are going up, and you just never know when something's going to happen, so it's best to be prepared, that way you're not losing all of your food, or not able to run your medical devices, or your security, or whatever it is. Now, 2023 is going to be an exciting year for solar generators as far as what's coming out, but for right now, if you found this helpful, leave a thumbs up, be prepared, I will see you guys in the next video.